Hey, welcome back to the Murder Journal. I'm Mel. I'm with Tommy. And first and foremost, I want to thank all of you that watched the our video of the 3D rendering by Asget Industries. We're just blown away by the comments and, and the interactions and the dialogues that you guys are having with each other because this is what is actually done in jury deliberations when they go over things like this. Um, kind of just took us by surprise, but all credit goes to Asget Industries. Um, Amber did an amazing job. She did an amazing job. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, just outstanding. There is movement in the courts. So anytime there's a little bit of movement with this, because the jury is out on deliberations, I want to go all in and figure out what's happening, watch them be on top of everything. And so since there was movement in the court today, we are going to see what happened with jury deliberations. The jury's in the courtroom. We're back on the record on 22117, the Commonwealth versus Karen Reed. Okay. All right. So counsel, you're aware of our note from the jury. Um, Dear Judge Canoni, I am writing to inform you on behalf of the jury that despite our exhaustive review of the evidence and our diligent consideration of all disputed evidence, we have been unable to reach a unanimous verdict. It's going to be a mystery. By the four person. So I want to hear from counsel um, your view on whether there has been due and thorough deliberation. So let's start with Commonwealth. Oh, wow. My answer would be no, Your Honor. This simply hasn't been sufficient time yet. And what does the defense say? Uh, we believe that there has been sufficient time. All right, so I'll hear from both of you in more detail. Oh. Mr. Lally, I will hear you. Your Honor, the jury received this case uh, just a, um, 19 hours this ago. week. 19 uh, hours. And, uh, They've been in deliberation. Like days, and, and I'm not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that they haven't conducted their due diligence in regard to uh, their deliberative process, but I would submit that it is far, far, far too early uh, in their deliberative process to even consider giving them any kind of uh, Tui Rodriguez instruction or anything close to that. Um, furthermore, what the note doesn't really indicate uh, affirmatively that they can't yeah, it does. a conclusion. It just says that they haven't come to a conclusion uh, through their deliberative process at this time. Um, so it, why else would they send asking it? asking for one is what I would say. All right. Thank you, Ms. Giannetti. I'll hear you. You are, I would disagree with Mr. Lally's characterization of the note. Um, the word exhausted. Yeah. Is the word I think that's often <laughs> They're communicating to the court that they've exhausted all uh, manner of uh, compromise, all manner of persuasion, uh, and they're at the end of the uh, you know, this is a, a, a case where the jury has the legal instructions. They've only really asked one question, which was to try to get a report that they were not allowed to get. Uh, and I think the message has been received that the evidence is closed. They won't get anything more. They've been working uh, essentially nonstop over the last, you know, three to four days. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, approaching a, a weekend. Uh, they didn't come back with this at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. They're at 12 o'clock, and they have nowhere to turn. So our position is the jury should be read the Tui Rodriguez model instruction and uh, go from there. Okay. All right. So you all know that it is within my discretion, I decide. So um, <laughs> a case that has been... Yeah, it's a long case. This is our fourth day of deliberations, but Tuesday was a short afternoon, maybe two and a half hours. Oh. Um, Wednesday, they She's left gonna early send them back. because mm -hmm. of an appointment. Yesterday was um, also shortened a little bit, and this note arrived with less than three hours of deliberations today. So the length of the... <laughs> trial, the length of the deliberations. I know the case had, we heard from 74 witnesses. There are 657 exhibits, very complex issues in this case. I'm not prepared to find that there have been due and thorough deliberations at this point. So I'm going to send them back out. We'll bring them in and we'll do that now. Wow. 
What is so, it when they uh, they ask for their what they voted? What is that called? They poll the jury. Poll. That's poll what it is. Jury, yeah. yeah. But right now, what the judge is saying is that the foreman or foreperson sent the judge a note stating they have exhausted um, all deliberations. They've in all conversations. They have a hung jury. They're. It has to be unanimous. Everybody has to think that she's either not guilty on all the charges or guilty on all the charges. Just you, one will render a hung hung jury. Do you think we'll end up with a poll? If it's no, if it's hung, probably not. And the question will be then will if it's a hung jury, will the prosecution try Karen Reed again? And if they do, I don't see it going any different. It'll just be worse. They would have to probably, the defense would have a reason to the, request a change of venue. Change of venue. And that's what I was going to get at, was I think the defense is going to file for a change of venue. If there is a hung jury and the and Lolly decides to go after her again, which would be, I can't see how that would work out well. I had to talk to you offline about what I feel about the judge, but I'm not impressed by this judge. I'm writing to inform you on behalf of the jury that despite our exhaustive review of the evidence and our diligent consideration of all disputed evidence, we have been unable to reach unanimous verdict signed by your four person. So, yeah, we all know how hard you've been working. Lunch will be arriving shortly. When it comes, I'd ask you to clear your heads, have lunch, and begin your deliberations again. So, or continue your deliberations. All right. So, I'm sending you back out. So, in other words, <coughs> no. And too bad. So sad. All right. How so do you feel about the judge's decision? That should be the question right off the bat. How do you feel about the How judge's do I decision? feel about yeah. her sending them back? I think she just wants it done. I think she wants it, it done either way. I think um she doesn't want a hung jury. She wants an answer, yes or no, an guilty yeah, or not guilty. Done. But to be honest, I I I I don't agree with her decision because I think their minds are set one way or the other, and you're not going to convince them otherwise. They're from Canton. So obviously they have some strong opinions about this. So if they're saying we have exhausted, they're not going to change. No one's at this point, 19 hours in, I don't think they're going to change. There's a litany of charges, but then they included the option for a lesser, a lesser charge. charge if not. And, so I which, I, is, which is weird to me because isn't that a judge's decision to lessen the charge if she feels like it needs to be and not a jury? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. That's just, me. I don't know. I'm not a judge. Yeah. We're I'm not. not a lawyer. I'm just someone who sits on the outside and, and ponders stuff. Um, but we there's a lot of stuff going on in Canton. There's a lot of yes. stuff coming out of Canton now. There's a, for example, girl that, you sent me some stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, so there was a girl who they said committed suicide, and then evidence shows otherwise. So the yeah, they changed it, right? the, the three cops that are on the case that, and they're on the same in the same outfit as the ones that did Karen Reed's case. Um. So there's a lot of people that I know are really nervous about the and I know I am too the longer that they stay in deliberation so I want to share something that we we kind of put together um oh that does not look good okay that does not shorten look good. our pictures a little bit more yeah, off to the left there we go there we go there we go look at it okay so I wanted to put up these different jury deliberation times because you know some people say okay if they take too long it's usually not good um if it comes back quick that's usually good for the defendant but as you can tell in recent cases this is this is not all this doesn't always hold true for example um Derek Chauvin 10 hours guilty that's not too long and Tommy brought up something earlier 
when a jury is what counts towards the hours of jury deliberation, it's when they're in the deliberation room, not when they're at lunch, not when they're at home. You know, they only count the hours that they're actually deliberating. So if they just deliberated two hours over five days, it's still 10 hours. Okay. Yeah. And folks, it's because I read something that said, hey, they delivered for 27 hours. I thought that they continually did it. And then we found out it was over a course of four days. So I brought it mm -hmm. up to Mel and that's how it was. Again, I'm learning this stuff. I mean, yeah, and that's fine. You know that's what I'm fine. saying? I've dealt with court for, you know, getting my kids uh, or getting the my family son. law. And uh, that's, that's about it. You know, traffic violations. You know? Yeah. 182 on my motorcycle. I got out that's of that. Normally, too. let's not brag about that, buddy. <laughs> I, yeah, but I got out of it all because the cops that stopped us were really cool. And then the state comes up and pulls out his gun on all of us and told us to get down. And yeah. the cops were like, the five police officers was like, what are you doing? Well, because and technically so anything over 20 miles an hour. And when you go over 90 it's a it's an automatic supposed to be it's automatic cuffs you're going to jail it's reckless endangerment in any state no and i got that but drawing your gun on people who are already pulled off to the side of the road talking to five officers as it is like we got surrounded yeah. by by the officers and then this state he showed up like 30 minutes later and pulled his gun out as soon as he got out of the car but that's what got us out of the whole ticket whole violation for the court so um going back go ahead i'm sorry i was rambling right. so murdoch the the most recent even though it was overturned okay uh his he successfully won his appeal mm -hmm. um that jury deliberated uh for less than three hours and i remember that i watched that whole case they went in and i had lunch i got home they you know yeah it, it was a good deal it, eddie ray ruth Two and a half hours, guilty. Guilty. He was the one who was the safety on the range. And Chris Kyle and his friend Chad Littlefield uh, were shooting and he killed them. In Florida, George Zimmerman, that jury deliberated a long time, 16 and a half hours. And he was found not guilty in Trayvon Martin, you know, with the death of Trayvon Martin. And Kyle Rittenhouse, that's re that's recent, 27, 27 hours, not guilty. Yeah. The most recent ones, the Daybells, okay? Lori Vallow Daybell, and um, this is the cult, the Doomsday, the Doomsday Prophet trial, yeah, yeah, yeah. what this is known. Uh, just under seven hours, that was a fast verdict, guilty. And Chad Daybell just under five and a half or no five and a half hours and he was not only found guilty of murdering uh lori vallow's children as well he was also guilty for the murder of his first wife tammy daybell and 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 they were reaching with that so i wouldn't want people to panic because it's taking longer right now it's hung either way they have to be unanimous and the like we said, you know, the um prosecution stacked. They do you think it's just the charges? Yeah, and I was gonna say that. Do you think it's just too many charges? And so, like, somebody's like, "Well, we'll go for the lesser charge here, like the DUI." But some people's like, "Why? They were all drinking." Yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm not in yeah, the room. I don't but know. I just wondered if it's just too much. Well, they have to go through each one and. There was an issue. Oh, the verdict form. The verdict forms. This, and I am going to zoom in for you guys. I do apologize. Okay. So when you look at the verdict slip, how it was given to the jurors. Um, manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle. So you see how they have not guilty or guilty of offense as charged. Guilty of lesser included offense, involuntary. Okay, that's totally different than manslaughter. But yeah. okay, you know, whatever, we're just going to go there. Notice there is no not guilty. So 
all they have here is manslaughter, not guilty, or guilty as offense discharged, or guilty of a lesser included offense, or guilty of lesser included charge of. There's no option for not guilty of any of these lesser offenses. And then, and so I have the sample jury verdict form. So I want to show you. It's not at all it, like what she was saying. This is a sample um, verdict form. Okay. We find the defendant not guilty of the offense charged or any lesser included offense. That wasn't an option wasn't for what yeah. she gave the jury. Um, so it, so obviously Jackson has problems with that. Here's the thing. She even asked, um, can only ask the, uh, uh, other Karen's lead lawyer who's from mass. And he was like, I've never seen this before judge. He, or he <laughs> said, yeah, I've, I've seen him. Yeah. But this is not how I saw This is it. not how, how it is like, but you know, Alan Jackson being quiet, but this is, you could tell this man meant business. Like he was heated in this. In oh, this video. he is pissed. Face gets uh, red. Like <laughs> I could see spit coming out of his mouth. He was. This is the challenge that Alan Jackson made before the court about the verdict slips. Yeah. So these are fireworks, folks. And um, this was uh, from court. 22117. All right. Uh, so why are we out here? Your Honor, the, I just saw the verdict forms, and as we discussed yesterday, the amendments that the court indicated it would make a verdict. Oh, no, no. Okay, I did not say I'd make it. I said I'd think about it. I said I was tired and I needed to think about it. You said before you were tired and you needed to think about it was you agree that there needs to be not guilty options for the subordinate charges no. under count two. I said that it made sense to me, but no, I did not change it upon looking at it because the verdict slip, this verdict slip as submitted to the jury is exactly how it always is in Massachusetts. Not. I, I, I don't really care how it always is in Massachusetts. I care about whether or not it's appropriate. It's appropriate. It's appropriate. Let me make my argument, if you wouldn't mind, Judge, why it's not appropriate. For, for a superior charge, they have to decide that she is not guilty of the superior charge, and that is the starting point of whether or not she is guilty or not guilty of any subordinate charge, often called a lesser included. Once they decide that she's not guilty of the superior charge, now there's two, two, two additional charges that they've been instructed. They must decide whether she's guilty or not guilty. Mm -hmm. How do they decide that she's not guilty of the first or the charge involuntary manslaughter? Okay. Anything else you want to say, Mr. Jackson? I, I'd like that to was the question. The How uh, do they decide that she's not guilty of involuntary manslaughter? Here it comes. Five? That's their decision to make. And how do they make it if they don't have an option to check a box that says not guilty? Don't they say. don't check the box that says guilty, do they? And then when they go to the next the next block, they don't check the block that says guilty. And on the top, you're left with not guilty. Okay? So it's the, it's the absence of the check mark that the court determines is the not guilty finding by the jury. Yes, that's what the verdict slip reads. It reads not guilty. If they don't check... Block two, three, or four, the verdict slip reads, not guilty. Okay? <laughs> that's how it is, Mr. Jackson. Well, that, and apparently that's how it's going to be because of the court's order. That is not how it should be, and it's over our strong objection. They need to, to see that there is a not guilty option for the subordinate charges. If they come back guilty on, for instance, involuntary manslaughter, that's immediately appealable. They yeah. didn't have an option on the verdict. The reversible to find error. Not guilty. It's almost like the court is directing a verdict of the subordinate charges. Okay. <laughs> I disagree with you. Ms. Tianetti, you've seen verdict slips exactly like this. Okay? I actually have one. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I have not seen a verdict slip there where... Oh, I hate it when they put that up. <laughs> At the end of that video, what you don't hear is... I guess Karen Reed is doing that sarcastic smile, you know, that some people do where they're just like, I can't believe this. Well, the judge says something funny, Miss Reed. Is that funny, Miss Reed? She, you know, Judge Canoni, it, it kind of, and it was so seething that to me, and I'm not saying this is so, but my perception of that when it happened was 
she does not like Karen Reed, and she wants. And I, I Karen told you this before. I really about. feel like she is vindictive, and that she's part of the corruption. I hundred percent so? feel that way. I I don't know why, but I hundred percent. There's not ninety nine percent. There's not you know seventy percent. I'm a hundred percent sure she's part of it. See, I'm not. I don't think she's part of it. Like this I also grand... feel like she doesn't know how to judge. I'm sorry. I know I interrupted you, but I'm just going to put out my opinion. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I have no problems with you sharing your. Oh, opinion. I don't. I don't yeah, think so. Yeah. I cut you off, like I um, usually do. I don't think that she's part of an overall conspiracy, and and she's a seasoned uh, judge. I just think she does not like the defense team. I know she. I don't think she. I think she can't stand Alan Jackson because keep in mind, he's an outsider. Um, I also don't, I, I think she's very behind her chief of police and the establishment in Canton. And I think she's in denial as far as a cover up, and maybe that upsets her. Now, I don't think she's corrupt, like in that form, like corruption, like she's part of it. I just feel like there's some beef there. Especially like, why would you tell Karen Reed that? Or there's certain ways that she said, "Hey, you know, objection to this." When it's a clean, it was a clean question, mm -hmm. and you're you're gonna accept it. It's just weird how, and then even deliberations now, they're at a stalemate or hang a hung jury. They're 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 stuck, and she's mm -hmm. forcing them to get through it. And all it's gonna do is for them to just to stay there. And, yeah. and I hate to sound like this, but it makes it's kind of like holding your feet to the fire where it makes people change their verdict just so they can go home and be done with the case. And I feel like it's wrong. It's negative. It's bad. So here we go back to yeah. I considered what you said. I went back and I read the jury instructions I gave yesterday. Um so I do appreciate the concern about the confusion this might cause the jury. Uh, I think it's easily clarified with the supplemental instruction. I don't think it's the verdict slip. I think it's how they're to follow the verdict slip. So what I've written up, this is a very rough draft. I'll read it to you. I'll take a break and let you consider it if you want. But and this works out. I received this, I don't know, 15 minutes ago, and I've been the letter, the uh, question from the jury. So it seems a good time. So I was working on this. It seems a good time to bring them in for an answer to that question. And I would say, um, as long as I have you here, I want to clarify my instructions regarding your verdict as to count two of the indictment. As I instructed you yesterday, there are two lesser offenses of that crime, which are involuntary manslaughter and motor vehicle homicide, felony, OUI, liquor, and negligence. Therefore, count two encompasses three separate charges, the most serious of which is manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor. In considering count two, you should first focus on the crime of manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor. And if the Commonwealth has failed to prove that crime beyond a reasonable doubt, then you are to consider the remaining lesser included offenses in descending order. The lead charge is manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor. If you find that the Commonwealth has proved all five elements or proven all five elements of this charge beyond a reasonable doubt, then your verdict shall be guilty of manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor. If, however, you find that the Commonwealth has not proven all five elements of manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor, then you are to consider whether the Commonwealth has proven beyond a reasonable doubt the three elements of the oh. lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter. If the Commonwealth has proven the three elements of involuntary manslaughter, then your verdict shall be guilty on the lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter. If, however, you find the Commonwealth has failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt the crime of manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor and the lesser included offense of involuntary manslaughter, then you are to consider whether the Commonwealth has proven beyond a reasonable doubt the five elements of motor vehicle homicide, felony OUI, liquor, and negligence. 
if the Commonwealth has proven beyond a reasonable doubt the five elements of motor vehicle homicide, then your verdict shall be guilty of the lesser included offense of motor vehicle homicide, OUI, liquor, and negligence. If, however, the Commonwealth has failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt all elements of manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence of liquor, and has failed to prove all of the elements of the lesser included offenses of involuntary manslaughter or motor vehicle homicide felony OUI liquor and negligence, then your verdict must be not guilty to count two. Yeah. Uh, why is it liquor and not alcohol? Just the way that it's phrased. Okay. I was just wondering. Thank you, John. Have you heard? Yes. I, I deeply appreciate the court's um, additional clarifying language. I would simply ask for one very simple amendment, and that is at the top of the verdict slip that says the two words, not guilty. Um, we would ask that the verdict slip read, not guilty of the offense charged or of the offense charged or any lesser included offense. Which is what That's was it. on the standard. And the court's clarifying instruction would satisfy the defense. Not I think. I know it. That's all we ask. All right. I can repeat that if the court wishes. It's on the sample form, <laughs> Judge. You have it. Should. So there are some like minor changes we have to make um, to the verdict slip anyway. Just you know the. It has to be consistent. So the manslaughter while operating a motor vehicle under the influence, the tab needs to actually Tori. <laughs> so um, there needs to be some physical changes in the verdict slip. Anyway, it needs to be indented. There needs to be a colon after guilty of offense charge. It's not complete. It doesn't okay, have grammar. under the influence of liquor. It just says under the influence. So there are some minor changes that need to be made to the verdict slip. Does the Commonwealth oppose the um, suggestion made by Mr. Jackson, which seems like a reasonable one. No, you are. All right. So it will be not guilty. Uh, so tell me again how you want it. Sure. It's just on the sample, want lady. That's what frustrates me. And I agree with you, Tommy. It's kind of pissing me off is she's like, what's the verdict? What does it state? And it's, it's the sample verdict form, bro. It's, the one it should be it should be like you you pulled it up mm -hmm. <laughs> it, there is a an sop mm -hmm. uh, standard operating procedure and i guarantee it's in there so there has been a lot going on apparently at the council meetings for the for the town of canton canton at the select board meeting because remember chris albert is a select board member which is the executive government of canton and there's a long, uh, a very well-respected, long-standing resident, Rita Lombardi, who has been very vocal about what's been going on in Canton. So I want to show you, I want to share this with you because I thought everybody in Canton would be all about the Alberts and the McCabes, but, you know, we're not from Canton, so we don't know. So let's just go ahead. This no town is run by the McGalvins. That, that is who this town is run by. The people do not run this town. The select board does not run this town. The McGalvins run this town. And Chris Albert, the reason he has the behavior that he has is because there's no consequences and he is allowed, he is allowed to run havoc and terrorize this town and sick the people after us. And that is a problem. We, this is domestic terrorism. We need new leadership in this town. As it relates to Karen Reed, how yes. do you feel like, how do you feel like the Karen Reed case is handled by the Chiefs? Did she botch it? How would you do that? Botch it? No. She deliberately covered it up. They all did. They all covered it up. And how do I know this? From their own mouths. From their own own testimony. Their story never had a chance. It didn't fit the puzzle. None of it did. It was all he said, she said nonsense. What the defense presented was concrete evidence by the most highly credentialed people and experts in this country. People that were hired by the Department of Justice, by the NHL team. These people light years ahead of what we saw. What we saw 
in the trial for the Canton Police Station is ridiculous. And they lie and they have no problem lying or no problem making mistakes. They don't follow policy and procedure. Why? Because they have the guns. Is there any <laughs> one year renewal rather than no, three years? No. There's no relief. We're going to have a verdict tomorrow, and we are going to have a not guilty verdict. And that is going to shine a light on to why the Canton Police and the high-ranking people of not only the Canton Police, but also the Canton Fire Department, why their stories were told that were completely inconsistent with what the evidence, the real evidence showed. No contract renewal. That's what we need. We need someone from the outside. We need the federal government in here. We need receiving we need it now. Yesterday. Thank you. Someone said yesterday. <laughs> you, okay, I'm going to tell you like this. Um, I'm not in the town, so I can't say that the Alberts own everything, but they are in everything. They're in everything. I, I've told you this before. I guarantee that they had friends that are on this jury, and they're the ones hanging the jury because everybody else is voting not guilty. I'm a firm believer. Stick to your guns. Believe, stick to your beliefs, mm -hmm. and and that's it. We don't always agree. Hell, you guys see us. We don't always agree on stuff. She yells at me. I yell at her. Uh, but there's a lot of things that me and Mel do not agree with. But that's what makes it special. Because mm -hmm. we can see each other's sides and be like, all right, compromise. Cool. Actually, I don't feel like we compromise at all. We listen to each other's opinions and. And that's how it is no, sometimes, no, except for do. mermaids. No, I will <laughs> never believe in mermaids. All right, guys. Well, we're going to keep you guys up to date as soon as we know things. Until then, you know, again, we're a new channel, at least with within this genre. And um, continue to like and subscribe and comment. I am loving the dialogue you guys are having with each I'm other. Glad that, I'm glad you, I know I'm cutting you off. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh I've been commenting back to you guys. Uh, so if you see my monkey on turntables, I'm just going to flash it up real quick. Guys, we really appreciate you guys' talk. If we don't get back to you, it's not that it wasn't a good question. It's just that a lot of questions have come filtering through and we're trying to reply as best as possible. Yeah, we're not, we weren't really expecting 10K. <laughs> no. And yeah, we're just a little, we're just two veterans shooting the shit. Yeah. over true crime all right then until next time uh you know if we get a verdict today guys i'll be popping back on until then we'll spoke at you later peace mm -hmm.